Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my podcast. And if you are watching on YouTube, hi, welcome to the YouTube video. I have been absolutely loving filming these videos for you and making them feel still like a podcast if you're listening. But if you're watching on YouTube, it kind of just feels like one of my old sit down videos, which I want to do a lot more of. I am entering the new year with such motivation and inspiration and that is the best way to enter it. I mean, I'm recording this a little over a week before the actual new year, so I hope this motivation lasts. But I will say, this is the week before my period. And all of you ladies know that the week before your period, you feel like everything's going wrong, nothing is right, you don't feel great. And the fact that I'm feeling inspired and motivated the week before my period, I think is a good sign that I actually feel this way. It's not like a hormonal thing. And I am going to feel even better next week and going into the new year. So I'm just feeling super inspired. I also think part of it is because I have actually been spending a lot more time by myself. I am an introvert. Like a lot of people when I say that get so surprised because obviously I am a content creator. I'm an influencer. And so They don't think that like influencers are introverts because we do put our life on the internet. But I actually think that a lot of influencers are actually more introverted and being in front of a camera is not the same as being with people. Like I am by myself in my apartment right now. There's no one with me. It's just me and the camera. And while yes, thousands of people will be listening to this, I don't see that, you know, like, yeah, I see the number afterwards, but like I am alone in the comfort of my own home in my bed right now. Like I am an introvert. And this past year, I have been the most social that I have ever been in my life. I have made so many friends. I've gone out a ton. I've gone to parties. I've done dinners. I've gone to events. And I think it was a year where I needed to be social. And it was a year where I met so many amazing people. And this year, 2023, is going to be the year that I will remember for the rest of my life. And it's going to be the year that... I will be able to pinpoint I changed and I grew so much in this year and it was such a pivotal year for me not only in terms of my career um, but personal stuff like the friends that I made this year, the people that I met, the like relationships that have grown and changed and the fact that it was my first year fully single and fully by myself and 100% independent it's going to be something that I remember forever and it's going to be, so, I, I'm already so grateful for it and the year hasn't even ended yet. So if you haven't listened to my last episode, which was all about um, my 2023 wrapped, I highly encourage it because it'll kind of give you an insight onto how I'm feeling entering this new year. Um, and I was going to record this video and I was going to make it about my 2024 New Year's resolutions. But honestly, I haven't had the chance to sit down and actually plan my New Year's resolutions as much. And instead of having like numerical goals, which I'm still going to have, I, I don't think I'll share my numerical goals. I think those will be personal. Um, I wanted to make this podcast about entering the new year and what habits I'm bringing. Because if in order to reach any goal, you have to have good habits to get that goal. Pretty much reaching goals is just a bunch of little tiny wins and a bunch of little tiny habits that you do repeatedly that then end up making you achieve that goal. Like if you want to, if I, if I want to hit, you know, 350,000 subscribers, let's say, my habit should be that I am filming multiple times a week and uh, that might mean that I'm waking up early so that I have time to film and then the habit is waking up early and that in turn is going to help me reach my goal. I am currently reading a book about habits. Um, I think it's called The Business of Habits or something like that. It's like a really popular book. I would always see it on Barnes and Noble and finally I was like, you know what, I'm just going to purchase it because I read Atomic Habits a little bit ago, a few years ago actually, and it changed my life. I thought that book was so amazing. I kind of want to reread it now that I'm older, but that book was so good. And so I bought this book. And although I do like it, it's definitely not the same level of atomic habits. It's more for like changing your business with habits. So it's still useful, but it's a little dense. Like it's definitely taking me a long time to read. But it it just has reminded me that by, you know, little tiny habits can actually make such a big impact in actually achieving your goals. So 
that is why I wanted to make this podcast all about the habits that I'm bringing into 2024. So things that I've been doing this year that I want to continue to do in 2024. And it's not necessarily things that I've done all year. Some of it is things that I've done in the past three weeks, you know, or the past month. Like it's not stuff that I've consistently done in 2023, but it's stuff that even in the little amount of time that I have been doing these habits, I have seen a difference and I have felt different. And I want to carry that into 2024. So I'm very excited about today's episode and I'm so happy that I get to film in my bed. Like if you guys are watching on YouTube, I'm wearing this like really big knit colorful sweater, which I don't really wear a lot of color as you know, but this one is so cute and it's actually, I'm not going to lie, it has felt like winter in Miami. Usually Miami will have like one weekend where it's cold and by cold I mean like 40s and 50s and that's it and then it's back to like 70s and 80s and although it's not like 40s and 50s right now it has been incredibly gloomy. Today it's actually sunny. It was really gloomy this morning. It was like misting a little bit. It's sunny now but it's been a little bit gloomy. It's been in like the 60s which 60s with no sun is actually cold especially for Miami. We've been having a lot of thunderstorms and rain, which is also unusual for December here, and it has been so nice. I'm not going to lie. Like, it has been just so relaxing, and I think just, like, me going back to saying that this was my most social year, even though I am an introvert, this was my most social year, and I, like, really, I think, missed having those alone moments and that alone time, so because it's been so gloomy and rainy, I haven't wanted to do anything. And because it's the holidays, a lot of my friends are actually out of town. I'm going home on Saturday, but a lot of my friends are out of town. And so I have gotten to spend a lot of time by myself, which I think has re-inspired me with content creation. I think that was the biggest like loop around way of saying it. I think I've I went through like 30 different trains of thought while trying to say why I'm, I've been re-inspired. Um, so now that you know how my brain works, Wow. Yeah. I'm going to listen back to this and be like, Natalie, what the F are you saying? Like what? You literally ran around in a million circles. So props to you if you're keeping up with this podcast and you're like, oh, <laughs> um, anyways, anyways, anyways. Yes, I am going back to me being an introvert. That is why I'm re-inspired because I've actually spent some time by myself and I've allowed myself to recharge because as you know, introverts recharge when they are by themselves. And I haven't had that all year until December. Um, and I'm like so excited to do that in the new year. Like I'm traveling a lot in the new year. I'm not going to lie. I'm already super nervous about the amount of travel I'm doing because I have, I, I've always wanted, I've been like, okay, I want to stay put. I don't want to travel that much. That's what I gave my goal for 2023. I ended up not traveling as much in the first half of 2023, but once the second half came, I was kind of gone every single month on a trip, which I'm so grateful for. And it's for the most part, work trips. In the summer, I did have a few like vacations, but every time I go to New York or LA, that's for work. When I go home, I'm working there. When I go to Texas, I'm working there. So it's not like vacation mode. It's just like change of scenery for me. And so that is why I travel to new places. Um, but in the new year, I have so many trips. Like I have to eventually go to New York and LA because I want to talk to, we're, we're going to start raising again and I want to talk to people like in the industry. So I think I'll probably be gone for like a month and I'll probably spend some time in New York. Then I'll go to LA. I definitely want to spend some more time in Texas with my friend Julie. Julie and I always joke that we're like in a long distance relationship because I see her like every single month pretty much. Like one of us will travel to each other, which is what I was doing when I was in a long distance relationship. Like when I was with my boyfriend and we weren't together, like physically together, I would travel there. He would travel to me and we would see each other every single month. And that is what Julie and I are doing now. So she's pretty much like my long distance girlfriend. <laughs> except platonic um and we just would joke about that because like we're like wait we like it, it's just funny like we always talk about each other as if we're like dating um and we're not but it's just like so funny the way that we, how we like miss each other and we'll text each other we're like I miss you so much we're like wait we need to get on the phone we like FaceTime all the time so yeah she's like my long distance girlfriend um so I need to go to Texas at some point I want to go either in like January or February 
And I even texted her right before recording this. I was like, so you want to come to LA with me for a little bit? Um, Because it's always more fun traveling when you have someone there. And we travel really well together because we work together. Um, And so like we don't work together like on the same business. But whenever we travel, both of us own our own businesses. So we understand that like we need to work. So it's really fun traveling with her. Um, But anyways, I'm going to need to go to NYC and LA, Texas as well. I'm planning on going to Costa Rica with Julie also um, because she is from there. So I want to go to Costa Rica in February. Um, In March, I don't believe I'm traveling. April, we're going to Coachella, me and Julie. Again, you're going to see this as a pattern. We're going to Coachella in April, which I'm really excited about. So I'll probably be back in LA as well then. Um, I don't think I have anything in May do I? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. How could I forget? I'm going to Sweden. So I'm going to Europe in May um, because I'm going to see Taylor Swift and I'm so excited. Have not booked any flights, have not planned that trip at all. To me, that sounds like it's like a far away land. Like it's like never going to happen because when I bought the tickets, it was like in so long and now it's kind of creeping up on us. So I do have the Airbnb, but that's about it. I don't have like any flights. Um, and then in June and July, I don't believe I have any like trips planned. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any trips in June or July or August maybe, but I'm sure that that will change as time goes on. And then September is wedding season. So I have two two weddings in September, one in the beginning, which will be in Italy, which I'm so excited for. Then I have another wedding in upstate New York. I believe October, maybe it's October. I need to verify the date, but my friend Grace is getting married either end of September or beginning of October or end of October at some point in the fall. So that's going to be in upstate New York. Um, November is obviously the holidays. And then December, I think I'm going to have another friend have her wedding in December. So second half of the year will be wedding season. So I am really excited, but also like so nervous for all of the travel because I feel like, oh my God, I'm like already listing out all these trips. Like when am I going to have time to actually stay put and stay in Miami? So very grateful, but also like, oh my gosh, I just have so much that I'm doing. Anyways, This podcast is all about the habits that I'm taking. So I have 10 habits that I am going to be bringing into the new year and I have my computer right in front of me. You guys can't see it. It's out of the frame. But if you see me looking down, that's what it is. Um, And so I'm just going to start listing them off and I hope that this video or this podcast inspires you to take some of these habits into the new year. So the first habit, oh my gosh, live on the podcast I have a guy that I matched with on Hinge, and he is calling me right now. Why? Okay, he told me that he wanted to talk on the phone, Um, but I don't do uninterrupted calls like that. So that was strange. I hate talking on the phone. I'll call him afterwards, but I just didn't answer. That would have been funny if I answered and got it on the podcast. This podcast is due though, so I need to I need to plan this. But uh or I need to film it. Okay, that like really threw me off guard. I haven't been talking to many guys. <laughs> I have not been talking to that many guys on dating apps or anything, but this one guy, I was like, okay, whatever, like let's just chat. Um and then he asked for my number, so I gave him my number because I like never open the Hinge app. Um and he just tried to call me. Un prompted. He didn't ask me if he could call me. Let me see. Did he? Nope. But he did say, he goes, oh, are you busy today? And I was like, no, chill day at work, chill day at home. So that's definitely why he asked me that. Okay. Anyways, I'll call him afterwards. Oh, I hate that. I hate it. Okay. (sighs) I'm like sweating now in here. Let's talk about these habits. (laughs) Habit number one, uh, don't be scared of phone calls call more people. That's actually one of my habits though. Anyways, I'm going to get to that. Okay. (sighs) Let's get back to it. First habit for the new year (laughs) is waking up at 6 a.m. or I put in parentheses before 7 a.m. So (laughs) 
I'm like so thrown off right now. Okay, anyways, waking up at 6 a.m. or before 7 a.m. I have been doing this the past few weeks and I have felt amazing. I'm gonna film a video all about my 6 a.m. morning routine, which I'm really excited about. This week, I've definitely been sleeping in a little. I've been waking up at like 7.30, but it's also the holidays, so I'm letting myself. When I wake up at 6 a.m., I have like a two, two and a half hour, three hour morning routine and it is so nice. Like I am, I I feel like I get so much done before the work day and then I feel even more energized. Like I was worried that if I woke up at 6 a.m., I would be like exhausted throughout the day, but it's actually been the opposite. I have felt so much more energized um, and like so much more excited to take on the day. And I always thought like 6 a.m., oh my God, I'm so scared to wake up that early because like um, I like love sleep. Like I I just like can't wake up that early. Like I always thought I was always knew I was a morning person, but for me, morning person means like 7 a.m., 7.30. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do one week where I'm gonna force myself to wake up at six. I'm not gonna snooze my alarm. I have a hatch alarm, which is like the best thing that you can purchase. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a hatch sleeping alarm. Um, and it wakes me up with the sound of ocean waves. I am very cheesy like that. Like I will have like ocean waves going on in the background and it's so nice. Um, so I, (laughs) I have been waking up at 6am and it has been so nice and so productive. And it's something that I, whenever I would wake up at like seven or seven 30, I just feel like I can't do anything. Like I can't work out in the morning. I don't have time to cook breakfast. I'm like, I'll start working at 10 a.m. and then I feel like I'm like so behind for the day and I think my cortisol levels go up when I am waking up that late because then it stresses me out that I haven't started working at like eight in the morning when I like to start working. So that is why I will be taking that habit into the new year. Second one is doing low impact workouts and just listening to my body this one has changed my life this year. I've done it throughout the entire year. I've been doing Pilates. I canceled my gym membership. I no longer pay $200 a month for Equinox, like insane. I pay $25 a month for Form by Sammy Clark, which is Pilates. And I do it almost every single day. I I do it like three to five times a week. Let's be real. Not every day. Three to five times a week. It's Pilates. And it is so killer. Like I think I've noticed the most positive changes in my body by doing Pilates. Um, and her workouts are incredible. And then listening to my body. So some mornings I'm like, you know what? I really don't want to do it. Like I really, really don't. And I won't. Some mornings I will do absolutely nothing. Some mornings I will walk on the treadmill. Some mornings I will walk outside, but I've just been doing really low impact things that make me feel good. And my, I mean, I have never been happier with the way that I physically look in terms of like, my fitness um, in a while. And I used to do like weights at the gym and I used to like do, you know, try to do more like lifting stuff. And while I think lifting is amazing and can also transform your body, I personally think because I just feel so much better and I'm doing exactly like what I know my body wants in the morning, which is low impact stuff. I feel like I've, my mood has, has increased um, I just feel so much better. So yeah, no, I personally really like um, doing like low impact workouts and listening to my body. And I'm going to be taking that in to the new year. The next one is my supplements. I am big into supplements. I take vitamin C. I take these like liver supplements. But the biggest thing that has changed my life, this is going to sound like an ad and it's not, but if they would like to sponsor this podcast or sponsor me, I would be so happy about it, is Armora Colostrum. I, a dream guest of mine would be to have the founder of Armora Colostrum on the podcast because when I listened to the Skinny Confidential episode about it, that is what made me jump ship and get on board. My mom has been using colostrum for the past year and has been raving about it, but you know when your mom tells you something like you don't really believe her? that's kind of what it was. And then I started, I listened to the podcast and I saw other people talk about it and I was like, okay, I'm sold. It has changed my life. I feel like my skin has never looked better like ever. Like it's, it literally looks amazing. And you know how much I've struggled with my acne. My hair has grown so much and has gotten so thick. Like If you're watching on YouTube, I don't know if you can see my baby hairs right now, but I have photos of like when I have like a bun like this from last year and I have like no baby hairs at all. My baby hairs are wild right now. Like I have so 
many baby hairs they're essentially like my new bangs like I just have so many growing in I feel like I constantly have like hair kind of like staticky hair because of all of the new hair that is growing in like it's not breakage and whenever I go to the hair salon the past few times um they have told me that my hair is getting so thick at the root they're like you're the hair that is coming in is so thick and I know it's also because I don't bleach my hair anymore but I swear it is from the supplements I'm taking specifically Armora that has helped my hair and my skin and it is like incredible it's also made me not really get sick as often I feel so much better overall I feel like I have more energy like that is the best supplement that you can get and I would be I would die to have the founder on my podcast so let's have that be a goal for the new year (laughs) I'll look back on this episode and be like see manifested it (laughs) also before we leave the topic of supplements do not hate on supplements like I feel like a lot I mean nowadays I feel like everyone kind of takes supplements and sees the benefit but there are some people that are kind of like eh do supplements actually work like I am telling you I would have never seen this transformation in my hair and my skin if it was not for the supplements I'm taking um and yes they do work so go check them out Next one is experimenting with cooking based on ingredients in my pantry. This sounds really small and silly, but like I am not a chef. I don't know how to cook. And so cooking without a recipe really scares me, but I've been trying to do it more lately, trying to come up with my own snacks, coming up with my own like pasta sauce dishes, coming up with my own meals with what I have in my fridge, which is something I never used to do. And I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of like, what are the staples, what I can kind of cook with and all of that. So I am just really excited to start cooking more. And I've saved a lot of money this month specifically by not going out to eat as much and being like, oh, I have stuff at home. Even like my coffee I've been making here, I made my old cold foam to put on top of my coffee, which is like super yummy. So just things like that, like experimenting and like the cold foam, for example, I had no intention of making cold foam, but I was like, you know what? I kind of want to just like see if I have the ingredients for it. It's like two ingredients. It's literally so easy. But the fact that I like did it, I was just so proud of myself. And it's like those like little wins that might sound so silly and so stupid to someone, but for someone who like eats out all the time and like never, ever, ever cooks, that is a big win for me to be able to like find ingredients in my fridge and put something together. The next thing is being more open to meeting people. Hence the hinge phone call that has still has me shook. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to hang up this, this thing. And I guess I'll call him. Do I call him? Do I, do I text? What? Um, anyways, open to meeting new people. I want to not necessarily be as social as I was this year because I do think I will burn out if I continue the way I was going. Um, hence why like December was such a beautiful month for me because I feel like the past two weeks I've been like chilling uh after Art Basel I have literally been like by myself and it's been amazing um so just being more open to meeting people like going to like dinner parties or hanging out with friends of friends and doing more like intimate things and I'm not talking about going out because I actually don't really want to go out that much this year but just like saying yes to things and I feel like in the beginning of this year I obviously didn't really date that much I didn't start like actually going on dates until September of this year so like the second half of the year or August I forget when it was it was like second half of the year though uh for the most part and so I just want to start like entering this year saying yes to more things and meeting people and you know learning about different types of people and putting myself out there more so I don't know if I will you know get into a relationship or anything like that and I don't even know if that's necessarily what I'm looking for honestly I've had that conversation with myself so many times like do I even want a boyfriend like do I want a boyfriend genuinely right now or am I just like bored like am I just bored or do I want a boyfriend and I know I'm not bored like I do have a lot of stuff going on but like why do I want one is because everyone else has one. And so just like meeting people without any expectation, I think is this habit. Um, so I've been, I've been saying yes to more things the second half of the year and meeting more people, but I want to take that into this next year by just like meeting people with no expectation and seeing what comes out of it. The next one is tidying up every morning because I've been waking up at 6 a.m. I actually have incorporated in my morning routine to start tidying up. And I honestly prefer doing it in the morning 
instead of the night because at night I'm like exhausted I literally just want to get home and get in bed the fact of like coming home after a long day of work and cleaning up my apartment sounds miserable to me but in the morning I have so much time so I've been waking up early and actually setting aside uh, setting some time aside to clean do my dishes run the dishwasher um you know make my bed do my laundry and it has been so nice like I don't like doing that stuff at night I like doing it in the morning the next is to drink less alcohol that was my New Year's resolution for last year was to drink less. And I think I did it. I didn't drink too much this year compared to the previous year, but I want to even drink even less this coming year. Like I really, honestly, I don't want to get drunk this year at all. Like I don't have any desire to be hungover once this year. That's my New Year's resolution, not to be hungover. Um, because I'm not someone that drinks a lot. I sound like I'm like a crazy partier. I'm not at all, but like there are there have been days where I have gone out and I have been hung over the next morning. And it's like the worst feeling ever because not only do you lose, you know, that night, but, and you get like no sleep, you lose the entire next day. And honestly, even like Monday, I'm still feeling a little groggy. So I just like don't want to be hung over at all this year. And I want to hang out with people and hang out with friends that we're drinking is not like the it's not revolving around drinking. Like I'll have a cocktail, I'll have like a glass of wine or whatever, but I don't want to, I want to be able to like drive, you know? I think that's the metric is like, obviously don't drink and drive guys, but like after like one glass of wine, I'm good. So like that should be the metric. And I'm not saying I'm going to drive. I'm just saying that like, I never want to get past a point where I like can't drive. Like I just don't want to be drunk at all or tipsy. Like I just want to enjoy a glass and that's it. So we'll see. I think I'm going to do dry January also. So I'll let you know how that goes. Um, Number eight, walking as a social activity. I have had so many walking friendship dates. Notice how I said friendship dates because I did do a walking first date once. And after I like know the guy and stuff, I will go on walks with you. That's fine. But as a first date, I'm just like not really feeling it at all. Um... I don't like first dates to be walks. I thought it was a pretty like, yeah, I just didn't like it. So (laughs) I would not do a walking first date, but friendship date, absolutely. So I have been doing that a lot with people. Like if I just want to catch up with them, if I want to hang out with them, I'll be like, let's go on a walk. You get your workout in, but you also get to catch up with a friend. And so I've been really loving that. So that is, I want to incorporate more of that into the next year because I think you get to know people really well because all there is to do is talk. You know, you all, you, you just get to know each other and you talk and you talk and you talk and it's so nice. So it's one of my favorite ways to catch up with my friends. The next one is phone calls while driving. This is because in my New Year's resolution last year, I wanted to get closer and form deeper friendships and stronger relationships with my family. And I think that having a phone call while you're driving is like the best way to do it. I call Julie all the time while I'm driving. I call my friend Catherine all the time. I call my mom. I just like that is my time when I'm like, what else am I going to do? And that way it's not like, oh, when does this phone call end? Like it ends when I get back to my apartment. I'm like, hey, I'm here. I'm going to lose you. Bye. Um, But you get to catch up with people. And so that's like one of my favorite ways to just like call someone not unprompted. I don't do unless it's like my mom, obviously. Um, (laughs) But I don't do that many unprompted phone calls. Um, And I will just like be like, hey, can I call you? Let's chat. So honestly, if you are looking to like deepen your friendships and your relationships, start calling people in the car. Or if you live in New York and you don't have a car on your commute. Next one is next and last one is reading more books of all genres. My goal this year was to read 40 books. The next video on my YouTube channel is going to be all the books that I read this year and my reviews on them. So don't miss that. But I just want to read more different types of books. And I think I did that really well this year. Like I read books from business to fiction to educational to, you know, memoirs. Like I've kind of read all types of books this year and it has brought me so much happiness and I feel like I've learned so much and I just miss reading. The 2022, I like didn't read at all. I read like 10 books or something that year. So this year my goal was 40. I'm at number 30. It's December 21st. I think I can get like two or three more in, but I'm definitely not going to reach my 40 goal. Um, but it has challenged me to read a lot. And so I'm going to have, I think, a goal of like 30 books for this next year because I do think obviously I can do it. But yeah, just reading has like really changed my mindset, made me grow, made me entertained. Um, I get lost in these stories and it's been great. So 
anyways, those are the 10 habits that I'm taking into 2024. I'm really excited about it. And I hope that these inspired you to take some of these habits into 2024 because they've definitely changed my life for the better personally. Um, but I am going to end this podcast and I guess call that guy. I'll give you an update on the next podcast. Stay tuned. Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful and happy 2024 and a happy new year. And I can't believe that another year is already here. Bye, guys.